Thank you all. To Secretary Carson, Secretary DeVos, Dr. Larry Arn, educators, students, and participants, and all those looking on for this White House Conference on American History. Welcome to the National Archives. It's an honor to be with you all. Please. Today is Constitution Day, a day in which we celebrate the work of genius that's preserved in these very halls. 233 years ago today, our founders completed what for them was the work of a nation, but for humanity, a work for the ages, the Constitution of the United States of America. For the first time in history, a government was founded by we the people to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for themselves and their posterity. John Adams, our first vice president, aptly described our Constitution in his words as, quote, the single greatest effort of national deliberation that the world has ever seen. And so it was. But we all know the summer of 1787 didn't just happen. It was preceded by the summer of 1776 and the signing of our Declaration of Independence, whose magisterial words continue to echo into our time, that we as Americans hold certain truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And that among these are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. With those words, America laid the foundations for a government whose purpose, in the words of President Abraham Lincoln, was, and I quote, to elevate the condition of men, to lift artificial weights from all shoulders, to clear the paths of laudable pursuit for all. As the words inscribed on the walls of these National Archives read, this building holds in trust the records of our national life and symbolizes our faith in the permanency of our national institutions. The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution are the greatest charters of freedom the world has ever known. The character of our people and the principles enshrined there are the reason for our nation's unparalleled success. And they remain the greatest bulwark against tyranny in history. And the reason is simple. Our founders knew history. Sadly, we live in a time when too many are forgetting history today. Thomas Jefferson warned that, quote, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. But sadly, we live in a time when some seek to erase our history and deny our nation's relentless march toward a more perfect union. As President Trump has observed, in too many of our schools and universities, millions of young people are educated by those who seek to wipe out our history, defame our heroes, erase our values, and indoctrinate our children. But we gather here today, soon to hear from the President of the United States, as Americans who are committed to affirming the greatness of this nation and the ideals of our founders. Our president understands what we all understand. If we don't teach the next generation the principles enshrined in these halls, we can't expect them to preserve them. No one can preserve what they do not love, and no one can love what they do not know. That's why on this Constitution Day, 
Our president will reaffirm our commitment to the principles and liberties that this administration has championed from day one and take measurable steps to ensure that future generations will continue to understand the historical and philosophical roots of our nation. What we do here today is a part of our ongoing commitment to ensure that the rising generation will be able to do their part, as we know they will, to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And this we know they will do, because these principles are not just enshrined in these national archives, but they're enshrined in the hearts of the American people. And I know these great principles will prevail because like our president, I have faith in the American people. And I have faith that he who guided our founders on this day, 233 years ago, guides us still. For as the father of our constitution, James Madison, reflected on this day, and I quote, it is impossible not to perceive in it a finger of that almighty hand which has been so frequently and signally extended to our relief at critical stages of the revolution. So it's Constitution Day in America. And with gratitude to all of those who have gone before. And gratitude to all of you who are gathered here, who love and cherish our heritage of freedom. With gratitude to God who has ever guided the destiny of this land. And gratitude to a president who has ever championed the freedoms and ideals enshrined in this place. It is now my high honor and distinct privilege to introduce to you the 45th president of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. <laughs>